it needs to work out. And this is the almost true story of how our plane came to life. I'm Alessandro from Team Lift Up, and I'm here to try and explain you how, in the last couple of years, we worked hard to design, build and test our new drone for the Air Cargo Challenge 2022, named Kowalski. The design phase began with the release of the new regulations in 2020. We decided that our new drone should have been produced using composite materials to gain a much needed performance increase over our previous planes. Given the aim of transporting a low density cargo consisting of blood bags simulants, we found the need to develop a plane with a big fuselage. As you can see, it is the bulkiest component of the plane and it was designed to securely hold the cargo and support the wing's load. From the preliminary aerodynamic analysis, we determined that the fuselage would have offered too much resistance to the propeller flow, reducing its efficiency and thrust. Therefore, Kowalski shows a pushing propeller configuration with the motor mounted on the back. This particular choice implied that we needed to think about an equally particular solution to fix the wing tail assembly. To prevent the turbulent flow of the propeller from hitting the tail assembly, and to allow a solid connection over the motor, we opted for a twin boom tail support with a pretty unique all-moving inverted V wing tail configuration, where the rudder and the stabilizers are mixed in a single oblique surface. As for the main lifting surface, the wings show a single taper configuration and they were designed to satisfy, together with the tail, the strict geometry limits imposed by the regulations. The plane is equipped with both ailerons and flaps, actuated with servo motors hosted on the inside of the wing's structure. The plane is equipped with a landing gear composed of a standard 3-cycle configuration. The assembly is made from composite materials with custom-made wheels produced in our lab. Kowalski's fuselage acts as an interface between the different systems of the plane and it is designed to hold the payload and all of the main electronic components. To get to this final result, a lot of trial and error was necessary regarding the method of production and the use of the molds. The fuselage is composed of a monocoque made from a sandwich of carbon fiber bonded to an Arix foam core. The shape of the fuselage was chosen after a process of aerodynamic optimization and it is able to produce lift. The two halves of the fuselage are produced separately and then joined together in the middle. At first, we set out to produce the molds from scratch, starting with a master built with wood structures and polyurethane fillings. This process took us a long time, but we obtained a first set of usable molds that we employed to test various lamination methods before the final production. Thanks to some help from one of our sponsors, we managed to receive a new set of machine milled molds that enabled us to get a better result in a shorter time. The lamination process starts with the layering of the carbon fiber sheets inside of the molds, then the whole assembly is put under a vacuum to infuse the resin in the laminate. These methods allow us to better control the amount of resin used to obtain a lighter component. The fuselage presents a frontal opening used to access the loading bay to insert the payload and all the other important components. It is kept closed by the use of some embedded magnets. 
Inside we can find the cargo bay, a custom made box designed to hold the blood bags. It is built of a carbon fiber sandwich and is equipped with an elastic band to ensure a safe hold of the inserted cargo. The loaded cargo bay is then simply inserted into the fuselage and is kept fixed in place by the use of some strong magnets. One of the many problems encountered during the production of the prototype's fuselage was the precise cutting of the wing's spar hole, since it was necessary to cut them in the correct position to ensure the smooth insertion of the wing assembly while guaranteeing the correct angle of attack. We solved this problem by engraving some guidelines in the molds that were then transferred to the final laminate during the infusion process. Speaking of the wings, they are completely built out of composite materials with internal wood ribs. The aerodynamic geometry was derived from an optimization process involving both the airfoil and the platform geometry. To ensure an easy disassembly and the ability to transport them inside of the box, the wing is divided into two segments that are slid inside of the fuselage and are joined together using two bolts. The main problems emerged during the production of the C-shaped spars. We had to iterate through various approaches to obtain a standard production method that was able to ensure repeatable results with an acceptable geometry. In the end, we opted for a set of negative molds used to laminate the exterior of the spars that are filled with an internal foam core provided by one of our sponsors. The wing skin is produced in two halves from layers of carbon and kevlar fibers. The layers are deposited inside of the mold and then infused with the help of a vacuum bagging procedure. After the curing process, the two halves are extracted, cleaned and refined. After inserting the internal structure and the servo motors, the two halves are closed together. The use of internal motors ensures a smooth aerodynamic surface without any discontinuities on the wing. To further increase the aerodynamic efficiency, winglets are mounted at the wing tips. They are produced of carbon fiber laminate using a set of custom 3D printed molds. To test the complete assembly, we designed and built a test bench equipped with a stereo camera that enables us to analyze the deflection of the wing under load and the frequency response of the whole assembly. The wing is fixed on the bench and is loaded at the tip with a known load that is then released. The deflection of the wing is measured from the videos recorded by the camera and so it is possible to compute the static deflection and the frequency response. The main wing also acts as a fixing point for the two long booms that support the tail assembly. Kowalski's tail is characterized by a pretty unique inverted V configuration that prevents the turbulent flow from the pushing propeller from hitting the surfaces. We already had experience with V-tail wings gained from our work on our previous drone Marco Plano, so it was relatively easy to adapt our previous design to this new use case. The main feature of the tail wing is the fact that it is composed of two fully moving surfaces. The two parts of the V-tail do not present any kind of moving parts, since they rotate completely around their joint. The V configuration is achieved with the use of a connector placed at the top. As you can see, the actuator are placed inside of the tail, as to not disturb the flow. This was a pretty challenging problem, since the tail wings are really thin and we needed a way to make them rotate using just little servo motors on the inside. We are pretty proud of the result, since the tail works really well with limited play between the surface and the main spar. The tail wings are produced with an external shell made of carbon fiber composite and are filled with high density polyurethane. It is cut to shape with the use of a hot wire cutter guided by laser cut wood profiles. The carbon fiber is then laminated on the outside ensuring high strength of the component. Next up we will talk about Kowalski's landing gear. It is composed of a traditional three-cycle configuration with a single wheel on the front and two on the rear of the plane. This configuration was chosen early on in the design phase, but to get to a fully working assembly, we had to go through various iterations of the design. At first, we hoped to produce the landing gear using only a thin sandwich panel composed of carbon fiber and irex. The prototype showed that it was not strong enough to resist the landing loads, so a series of improvements were then added to the design aided by a process of FAM optimization. On the front gear, we had to add an expanded rubber core to ensure a sufficient torsional resistance while obtaining a better aerodynamic profile. We encountered many problems during the vacuum bagging process because of the difficult geometry and the soft rubber core. We had to design and 3D print a new set of molds designed to keep the laminate compressed during the curing process. 
As for the rear one instead, in the new iteration we added some reinforcement ribs to increase the strength and to prevent the delamination of the component even under the heavy load experienced during landing. The landing gear's wheels are produced in our lab from scratch. At the moment we are testing different kind of wheels. Some of them are made out of wood with an external rubber thread, while others are produced from a central 3D printed rim covered with rubber thread to ensure grip with the surface. As for the electronics, the heart of the plane, Kowalski has all the standard electronic components needed for its correct functioning. The battery type and voltage were chosen to comply with the regulation, while the capacity was chosen thanks to a series of tests aimed at finding the optimal one in terms of weight to energy ratio. The servo motors have been chosen bearing in mind that they needed to produce a sufficient torque while being small and light enough as to be inserted inside of the wing and the tail structure. To evaluate the motor performances, we designed and built a motor propeller test bench. With the use of a set of load cells, we were able to determine that the static thrust of the pushing propeller is almost equal to the standard pulling propeller configuration, confirming that we were free to use this configuration on our plane. We also used the test bench to evaluate the battery performance and consumption, and to choose the best propeller between the possible two. After carefully placing the antennas to ensure a continuous signal from the transmitter, we completed our control system by also connecting the GPS data acquired on board to the receiver to receive altitude information directly from the pilot transmitter. All of LiftUp team is really proud to be able to show you the final results of more than two years of continuous work, and we are looking forward to participating in this edition of the Air Cargo Challenge with our drone.